The Miu Flip is what one would call a bit of wasted potential. Like the smartest kid from grade school dropping out of college to make motivational TikToks in his car. He still got the charm, maybe even a little bit of talent, but deep down, you know he was meant for more. And that's kind of how I feel about the Flip. The way it launched was an actual travesty, and one of Miu's own making. They tried to rectify things with the V2 model, but that introduced its own set of troubles. Hinge gate, anyone? So of course, this left the community on its own to fix things once again. But this wasn't a Miu Mini situation where support was overflowing. We got, well, Onion OS, which is nice, and that's it. Developer enthusiasm was just not there for this platform. And it's a shame because this should be the ultimate GBA SP styled handheld. And I know that several other clamshell handhelds have released in the wake of this one, but I actually still prefer the Miu due to its size, dual analog sticks, and its wonderful pastel color scheme. And it's like, look, I'm not buying a new device. This one sent me back 80 bucks on launch. So what is a handheld enthusiast supposed to do? Well, you could give today's video sponsor a try. Yeah, Mech DIY reached out to me a while ago about doing a sponsored video on their new open source OS for the flip. And I'm not gonna lie, they definitely hooked me on the premise. And as a quick aside, I was not paid to say nice things about their product. They sent me the OS and a branded SD card and said, have at it. So I did. And what a time that was. The pitch was that they will be supplying a premium, open, and bespoke user experience. That they had fixed all the issues plaguing the stock OS and elevated the experience to a level where the community would be comfortable paying for it. These are very grandiose claims and the question is, are they without merit? And to answer that, we're gonna dive deep into this OS, explore every claim, and try to not only answer the question of whether the retro gaming community is ready for paid custom firmware, but also answer the question if Mecha DIY is the company to supply it. I am Silicon Fox, and I welcome you on this journey inside Surwish OS. To really understand what Surwish is driving at, let us briefly take a trip down memory lane regarding the stock OS experience. If you recall, I said things like this. The Miu Flip was not ready to launch. Its state is less than ideal. Or this gem. The instability is insane. I've moved to a SanDisk 512 gigabyte SD card because apparently that's something you have to do if you want a halfway decent experience outside of the box. And who could forget the classic? How did this device get delayed for so long and still ship like this? This is true madness. Not exactly a glowing review, but it still stands. I still have the stock SD card, and of course, all the same problems are still present. So what does Surwish actually fix? Well, let's break it down with a direct comparison between the stock OS and Surwish OS. We'll take this point by point, starting with the UI and presentation. I think both are solid as far as presentation goes. It's a simple layout, large, legible tiles with clean icons that actually tell you what things are. Though, I'm still not happy about the display out bug. This issue was present in the stock firmware too, and it's still kicking around in Surwish. It doesn't matter what resolution your external display is. Connect via HDMI and the UI wigs out. Icons become oversized, alignment breaks, and it's just not usable. And to anyone wondering if this is a hardware limitation, it is not. Open any app like RetroArch and everything scales just fine. So clearly, it's a UI layer issue, not an output pipeline thing. So not the best start for Surwish, but to be fair, outputting to a TV might still count as a niche edge case. And where Surwish fumbles there, they bounce back hard with theme support. Now I'm a huge sucker for themes, and I have to wonder if Surwish included some of these just for me. You've got your basics, standard dark and light layouts, and a few original designs that are surprisingly clever. But the standouts are the property-inspired themes, Zelda, Kirby, Animal Crossing, and even a Wii menu skin that hits dangerously close to home. My personal favorite, the Star Fox 64 theme. It's rare to see love for that game, and whoever cooked that one up, certified connoisseur, a true person of taste. But beyond the visual flair, daily usability is where Surwish really steps up. Menus feel faster, transitions are smoother, there's none of the weird input delay or a myriad of soft locks that haunted the stock OS. It actually feels like the handle is keeping up with you, 
not just tripping over every button press. You've also got some really practical features baked in, stuff like auto resume, so you can pick up exactly where you left off, or smart scraper, which auto downloads box art and metadata, even emu cleaner, which hides any emulator you're not actively using, so your UI stays nice and clean. They even have support for network protocols like FTP, SMB, and SSH if you're the kind of person who likes dragging ROMs over the network instead of yanking out SD cards. These tools are also great for homebrew development. Being able to remote into your MIUI to build apps and debug code works wonders for efficiency. Great stuff here, and not just aesthetic upgrades, it's real, everyday functionality. And as lovely as these themes and features are, the more pressing concern is still the core question. Is this OS any more efficient than its stock predecessor? Does it actually fix the core problems that plagued the original launch? Well, let's load up Fox Metrics and find out. For those who missed my full review of the flip, I built a small utility that will give us detailed power and chip readings for the console. I use it to illustrate how inefficient and idle this console was. You can get this software on my personal GitHub too if you want to check my homework. Anyways, I did a 10 minute idle drain test. I let the console stay on the home menu with no input and at 50% screen brightness. And the results were shocking. Take a look at this. Idle power draw on the stock OS hits 3.11 watts, while Sirwish OS cuts that down to just 1.73 watts. That's nearly half the power consumption and it shows in both battery life and heat. The MIUI flip would sometimes get hot for me up by the display assembly where the actual screen met the plastic housing. Never figured out what caused it, but that issue is entirely gone here. The handheld is so much cooler to the touch and this efficiency also extends to game sessions. My go-to stress test is Sonic Adventure 2 and the results again surprised me. Under load, Sirwish OS draws 2.94 watts versus 3.65 on the stock OS, a 19.5% efficiency gain. That efficiency boost is not just academic. Sirwish OS gives you nearly 45 extra minutes of gameplay on the same battery, the same game, same hardware, just smarter software optimization. That deserves a lot of commendations. Though they didn't just strip the OS to its barest features, they expanded functionality and still found ways to eliminate resource drain. Which is an excellent segue into my next point, because one of the headlining features in Sirwish's expanded functionality is native port master support. Now, this almost became a very different section. For the life of me, I couldn't get Portmaster to work. The app just kept on crashing every time I launched it, even after multiple reinstalls. It updated once and then that was it, dead in the water. But here's the trick. Don't update the app when it prompts you to. Stick with the version included with Sirwish and suddenly everything just works. Once I figured that out, the entire experience opened up. Full Portmaster integration on the flip, just like advertised. That means access to over 100 curated open source ports from Celeste and Cave Story to Sonic Mania and Shovel Knight. And the best part, they actually run well. Controls are mapped cleanly, performance is solid, and for once, it feels like the flip gets to flex a bit beyond basic emulation. I really want to highlight how important that is, especially on a device like this. I've always believed that native recompilation is superior to emulation whenever possible. If a game can run directly on hardware instead of being translated in real time, it's almost always going to be smoother faster and more accurate. Take Mario 64 for example. Emulate on the flip, it's a mess. Choppy frame rate, awkward controls, and visual glitches everywhere. But run as a native port, it's night and day. Higher frame rates, more fluid movement, better input responses, and cleaner visuals. But it's not just smoother gameplay, it's also more efficient. I logged power draw across three scenarios. Super Mario 64 emulated on the stock OS, emulated again under Sirwish, and finally, as a native recompiled port via Portmaster. The difference? Pretty striking. Emulation on the stock OS pulled an average of 3.87 watts. Sirwish shaved that down to 3.62 watts thanks to its system level optimizations, but with the native version, it dropped all the way down to 2.94 watts. That's nearly a full watt lower than the stock emulated version, doing more using less. For a handheld like the Flip, where thermal headroom and battery life are already tight, that's not a small win, that's a game changer. The Flip still struggles with N64 emulation, especially when it comes to rendering textures correctly. That was one of my biggest gripes during my initial review. And while those problems still exist with Sirwish, when you're running emulators, 
port master ports bypass all of that. And honestly, that alone elevates this device far above some of its contemporaries. So we've talked power, ports, polish, and presentation, but at the end of the day, is Surwish OS actually worth it? Well, honestly, yes. For the first time since reviewing the MIUI Flip, I actually want to use it. Not just for testing, not for just a video, but for me. It went from being a device I tossed in a drawer and forgot about, to one that I now reach for every time I have a few minutes to kill. The experience is just better across the board. It's more responsive, more flexible, more fun. And a lot of that comes down to the thoughtful design choices Surwish makes. Like, take the MP3 player app, for example. Not only is it clean and functional, but if you close the lid, the music keeps playing. It turns the flip into a pseudo MP3 player. On the stock OS, closing the lid stops music entirely. Or how about curated game collections? Pokemon, Mario, Zelda, Sonic, all pre-organized and easily accessible. You don't have to dig around or build your own folders. It's beginner friendly in a way that doesn't talk down to you. It's also stable enough for daily use. And once I figured out the Portmaster update bug, that too became a fully usable feature. But there's no getting around the price. Surwish is not free. It's $39.99 for the 128 gigabyte OS card and $60 for the 256 gigabyte version, which is the one that I have. That's a premium price tag for software. And for some, that'll be a deal breaker, especially when you can buy handhelds for the price of the software. But here's the thing. It feels premium in a sense. It's definitely not perfect, and you can sometimes see the strings holding things together, but Surwish does feel like a cut above what custom firmware devs are doing. It doesn't just patch the flip, it reimagines it. And this is not a dig at CFW devs because the work they do is amazing, especially considering it's released for free. I have nothing but the utmost respect for them, and I've long advocated for these people to be fairly compensated for their work. But we now have a company that's taking that philosophy to heart as well. And I feel that this initiative is well worth paying for. In fact, I'd go as far to say Surwish should be the default OS for this device moving forward, maybe even for other handhelds too. Because if more devices shipped with this level of polish, usability, and care, the entire handheld scene will be better for it. So I say, well done to Mech DIY and the dev team for Surwish. You put forth a competent and just excellent experience. My personal recommendation though is for you to spring for the 128 gigabyte version to sort of see if you wanna get your feet wet and if you like it. Um, I think the top end model is good, but maybe just a tad too expensive right now. You know, this is kind of early days, but I am not against supporting this project. I do think you guys should go at least to the website and check them out and see if you'd like it and check out the links in the description for it. But that's gonna be it for me. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and kindly do the YouTube things. But until next time, I'll see you all then. This is Silicon Vox saying ciao.